In this video, we're going to look at a th the third capital budgeting rule called the profitability index. The profitability index, or PI, as abbreviated, the profitability index is defined as the total present value of future cash flow divided by the initial investment. So just as a reminder, when we talk about future cash flow, we are talking about cash flow starting from year one and going forward. So do not include year zero cash flow when you're computing the present value of future cash flows. So if you think about what we are um, computing here, the profitability index is a ratio. So the numerator of this ratio represents the value and the denominator of this ratio is the cost. So think about what you would want if you are investing in the project. Would you want the value to be greater than the cost? Of course, right? So if that's the case, then if you are in, when you are evaluating independent projects, you want this ratio to be greater than one. So the great ratio greater than one means that the value you're creating is greater than the cost. So very similar to the net present value pro, uh, rule, the net present value rule is the difference. You want the value to be greater than the cost. And when you're subtracting the two, you want a positive net present value. Um, in the profitability index, it's a ratio. So you want, again, you want the value to be greater than the cost, and therefore you want the ratio to be greater than one. Now, if you are evaluating mutually exclusive projects, then again, you need to rank them. And you will rank them based on the highest profitability index. So let's take a look at how do we compute the profitability index. So we'll use the same um, cash flow that we have used all along. And we will start with two things. So to compute the profitability index, you will need the so remember that the profitability index, the numerator is the value and the denominator is the initial cost. So we know the initial cost is $165,000. And unlike computing MPV, we are not subtracting the difference. We are computing the ratio. So the denominator is $165,000, that is our cost. What we need to do next is to compute the numerator, which is the present value of future cash flow. So again, future cash flow starts with year one. So what we need to do is to compute the present value of this set of cash flow. And in fact, we have done that before, but let's do that one more time. So we start with cash flow. Again, we want to clear our work. So we don't put any cash flow in year zero because we are computing present value of future cash flow. So we go right to year one. Year one is $63,120. And year two is $70,800. And year three is $91,080. We also use the MPV function in the calculator. So this is where it can get a little bit confusing. You're computing the present value of future cash flow. This register is called MPV, but it is not the same as the net present value method. Is the MPV is just there to compute present value of multiple cash flow. So we go to click on MPV. The interest rate is 12%. So 12, enter. And we compute the present value. So the value of this investment is $177,627. So the difference or the ratio, uh, dividing $177,627 by the initial investment of $165,000 generated a profitability index of 1.0765. And remember that our goal is to accept projects that create more value than its cost. So we'll accept projects that has a profitability index greater than or equal to one. So our decision regarding this project is that we'll accept this project. Now let's take a look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of, of the profitability rule. The profitability index has one major disadvantage, and that is that when we are evaluating mutually exclusive investments, we may come to the wrong decision. The reason there again is because of scale. So the profitability index is a ratio. So we can have a pretty high ratio for a small scale project, but a 
smaller ratio for a large scale project that can actually create more value in absolute terms. Um, the another reason the probability index is used is one of its advantage is that when you have to do ra capital rationing or that you have to prioritize project because you don't have enough money then you would want the biggest bang for your buck so you want to have for every dollar you invest you want to get the greatest value and profitability index can tell you that um, and it's again it's also um, easier to understand and communicate because is your it is a return on investment in relative terms Lastly, is a, is a useful technique to use when we are evaluating independent projects. Now that you have been introduced to the three decision rule, let's take a moment to look at what we have learned. So for this particular project, we have computed the net present value, which has a which is positive at the required return of 12%. So therefore, if we are using the net present value rule, we'll accept this project. We also computed the internal rate of return, which is 16.13%, and that's greater than the required return of 12%. So we should also accept the project under the internal rate of return rule. The profitability index for this project is greater than one, and therefore you should also accept this project. So in this particular case, we have confirmation from all three methods. All three methods give the same indication. We come to the same conclusion that this is a valuable project based on both the net present value rule, the internal rate of return rule, and the profitability index rule. However, that's not always the case. If you come across a project where one rule lead to an acceptance decision and one rule lead to a rejection decision, then you should always, always go back to the profitability index rule. And um, as a general, comparing the three rules again, MPV versus internal rate of return versus profitability index. For independent projects, particularly, and projects with conventional cash flow, the three rules will generally give you the same decision, just like we saw in our example. There are a few exceptions, and you need to pay attention when those exceptions happen. The first is when you have non-conventional cash flow. Remember, non-conventional cash flow is a cash flow that change signs back and forth. So a conventional cash flow is a cash flow that starts out negative, and then become positive, just like in most business um, investment. You, you put money in to start the business, and then the business will start generating cash flow. However, there are, there are exceptions to that rule. The cash flow signs can, can change over time. One example would be um, a multi-stage project where you will start with negative cash flow, and then you will generate cash flow, and then the next, next stage kick in. Um, or more common is large-scale mining project or development project where you have cash flow negative investment, um, meaning big investment in the beginning, and then generate cash flow. And then when the project concludes, when the mine is depleted or when the project is finished, you need, a, you need additional investment to wrap up the project, to clean up the site. And so you have negative cash flow in the very beginning, positive cash flow throughout the life of the project, and then at the end, the cash flow will become negative again. So those are non-conventional cash flows. And in those cases, use the net present value method. The other exception is for when you're evaluating mutually exclusive projects. Um, mutually exclusive projects can lead to conflict when they are not, uh, when you have one of these two potential problems. One is, the scale difference, you're comparing a very large project versus a small project, or the timing of the cash flow is very different. So one project may have a lot of a more even cash flow throughout the life of the project. The other project may have a more um, exponential growth in cash flow. When you have those situations, um, you may see differences between the two. So let's take a look at an example and see what happens when you do have conflict. We'll do that in our next video.